One of the Met's most popular attractions is the Temple of Dender. It's a complete Egyptian temple, reconstructed inside its own custom-made glass gallery. This is the kind of temple that the pharaohs give offerings to in order to make sure Egypt continues successfully. There are different kinds of temples that are funerary temples that are dedicated to a dead pharaoh. But that is not what this temple is. This is a cult temple. The temple is decorated with a series of very interesting reliefs, much of which is in the tradition of Egyptian temples. There are many gods that we can recognize. There's Osiris, there's Isis, there is Thoth and Tefnut, there is Hathor and Horus the Younger, and of course, Horus the Falcon-Headed God. You find these gods on temples because this is how Egypt functions. The most important part in Egyptian religious belief is the need to keep universal order, and the gods are what do this. If you look closely, you can see other names on the temple, marks of a more modern kind. After the ancient Egyptians, the temple was abandoned, it became used by other people over time. There is evidence for a Coptic church in here, which of course then was also abandoned. And by the 1800s, it received visitors from Europe who found a trip to Egypt a very exotic and exciting thing to do. And as they came to Nubia, the place where this temple was located, south of Egypt, they visited and they carved their initials in the walls wherever the temple was exposed, which is why you see them in some places and not others. Some of the carvings are of people that are well known in history. For instance, Dravetti, who's inscribed his name here, was the French Consul General of Egypt during that time. Another man here was bringing Lord Belmore through Egypt on his grand tour in the early 1800s. And in front is actually a figure that is an American. Luther Bradish conducted some trade with the Ottoman Empire. He's right here with an 1821 date, I believe. And he eventually was associated with the New York Historical Society. Although the graffiti here is very interesting because it's old and historically relevant, we don't do this anymore. It's something that we now understand is not acceptable and it destroys what we have. In the 1800s, people didn't realize this and they, they didn't see them as um, important historical structures. They didn't have the same kind of context we have now. The Egyptians themselves didn't understand their history at that point and it was only a very, very early field, Egyptology. So it was seen more as, I think, a novelty now we understand a culture. We have, we have a tremendous history of 5,000 years in ancient Egypt, and um, we know that these things um, are fragile, and we need to save them in a way that I don't think was understood almost 200 years ago now.